very high disruptive investing is independent of disruptive investing itself. So you see in there, when, when disruptive investing, when the number is in wise in structure, okay, you have this under layer here. The structure just keep rising, but this thickness layer release comes. Okay, this is really amazing. Here. And uh, experimentally, there's a very strong system of support for such a phenomenon. Because experimentally, it shows uh, here's three boundaries. Okay, there's a, a few nanometers of thickness. It's a highly, very high density of dissipation. You see the black forest type of uh, lines, right? And this three boundary is decorated by this, this many dissipations, just as we showed here. So this mechanics of this is still unknown, but not understood. <coughs> okay. The bio-inspiration for this talk, okay, the bio-inspiration is Mother Nature selects hierarchical material, okay? And with all of human beings, we design many interesting materials, but we rarely, rarely, with some exceptions, we rarely think of how to, how to stack different structures okay, from one scale to another. Most of the things of composite, composites is on the, we mostly have two scale structure, okay, composites. And Mother Nature uses many scales to make the materials, for example, bone, is you know, a mammal scale, a micro scale, a meso scale, you know, and so forth, right? And, and for example, uh, uh, tendon, right, have these uh, molecules to apply paper, to classical, to fiber, right? Many different scale in a, in, a, in a hierarchical way. Okay. So, so now, for the first time, experimentalists, very recently, okay, 2009, have been able to synthesize a two scale or two scale copper. Uh, and copper is such an important material, right? like a lot of nation, even for graphene synthesis. Right? So, so they were able to synthesize a two scale copper uh, schematic shown here. Okay? So you have a green size. The green size in the experiments are several hundred nanometer, uh, 500 nanometer, the green size. Okay? Then within the green, within each green, you have this. Each grain is subdivided into so-called nano twins. Okay. This twin spacing can vary from a few nanometer to 100 nanometer. Okay, it's twin size. Okay. So two scales. So you have two length scale in, in, in the material. Why the twin spacing? The twin thickness. It's, it's a spacing which vary. They can control to vary from a few nanometer to 100 nanometer. The green size is another scale. Okay. So this is a, has one more level compared with the traditional. <coughs> traditional map, which only have one scale. Now, when they tested this material, the mechanical part of this material, okay, here they find this nano twin material, red box here. They find initially the material strengthens as a twin spacing decrease. Okay. So here's only twin spacing is there. The green spacing, green size is fixed. Okay. So as twin spacing decrease, the, the, the strength of the material increase. Follows the classical whole patch law. Okay. And this is the nano crystalline material. So the, the blue curve of the nano crystalline is only one level structure. I just refine the green size, not two level structure, not hierarchy, but one level structure. Just refine the green size. If you only have to refine the green size, you find, you find the strength increase according to the whole patch law, but continually increase. Okay. With nano twin, with two level structure, Find there's, there's a maximal strength. Okay, this is called inverse wall patch. At about 15 nanometer to the spacing, the strength takes a nose time, okay, decrease in that. However, this region is still extremely interesting. Still, still extremely interesting. Okay, look at here. Look at here. Okay. The stress ring law in this region is shown here. Here's coarse green metal, coarse green copper. Okay, very low strength, but very high ductility. Okay, uh, about 20%. Ultra fine grain copper, you increase strength, but the two become more brittle. And this is what we call nano crystal become more brittle. Right? There's a nano twin material, it's 96, uh, this twin space is 96 nanometer. So strength gets higher, but ductility decreases. Okay, you, you sacrifice ductility. Stronger and more brittle. Okay, and now, but now something interesting happened. When you further reduce the twin spacing, the strength goes up, the ductility also increases. Okay. This is a goal against the convention wisdom. Convention wisdom is whenever you gain strength, you sacrifice ductility. Okay. With two level structure here, you can see as I, as I go to the critical size, the ductility increase to about uh, roughly 
but strength goes about one gigapascal. Okay? In this range, in salt division, in salt division, you see here the material has a further reduced the plane spacing uh, from 15 and 84. Right? The material lose some strength, but the quality increase. Okay? And the thing of hardening. The work hardening is a very interesting problem because that means the material is very stable. It is like this, so independent of the spring rate. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's independent spring rate, but it's conducted by experimental spring rate. It has not been fully explored in, in, in a wide range of, depending on what range you think. Yeah, I don't want to think to, in a sense, optimize the spring rate to yes. enhance the, the, yes, yes. the effect that you look at. Yes, it has not been fully uh, investigated. So, but this is very interesting. In this region, you see the strength. Here's cross grain copper, right? And ductility. Here you can achieve 30% of the ductility, 30% of the strength, and with high work hardening and high strength, right? Really in this region. So it's extremely interesting. So, understanding the transition, understanding the copper in this region, are very interesting. So, here, here's some, so we did some study that we returned a model of that. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll, be, I'll skip some of this. This is the classical textbook material showing the strengthening maximum in metals, the hot hatch, dislocation, dislocation, precipitate. Basically, in these materials, uh, in classical strengthening theory, all have to do with how dislocation interacts with microstructure. Okay? The smaller, the stronger. It doesn't have to soften. Okay? If, you, if, you, if, you, if you want to have a softening theory, where do you go? You go to creep. Okay. In a classical textbook, you have to in involve creep in order to understand solving. So the solving mechanism is a diffusional creep, either Navarro Herring creep or Cobo creep. Okay. So why there's softening? Because the diffusion distance becomes smaller. As you reduce the grain size, the diffusion distance becomes smaller. And now if you at the same strain rate, the stress will be proportional to the length scale with green size square in the bar of tree or VQ in cobalt cream in Bali. Okay. So softening is diffusional cream in classical material science, hardening is structural confinement. Okay. But uh, this material doesn't show that, right? The nano crystal material does not show any softening. Nano twin material, twin boundary are coherent boundaries. They do not creep. Okay, twin boundary are coherent boundaries. With a high of green bond is not green, but not exempt diffusional green, you should expect even less so for twin boundaries. Yet twin boundaries that is softened. Okay. So this so the classical theory cannot explain this phenomenon. Okay. So, so I, I go on I don't I don't I don't go through that detail because of time. So let me direct the comment here. Okay. So we did a simulation here, we did a simulation here, and and just to check in just making this material in a sample on a computer with a green and the twin, with sub sub green twins. Okay. Then we can vary the twin size. Okay. And however, remember the limitation of NV simulation. We cannot go to the experimental size. Experimentally, the green size is 500 nanometer. We cannot do that. Okay. We can only go to 20 or 10 nanometer in our regime. So let's keep this crit criticism in mind. And our strain rate is very high. We are dislocating free. So experimentally, we have pre-existing dislocation or we're for dislocating free. But other things are free. So let's see what the simulation says. Now, uh, look at this when green size of 10 nm grain. Now we vary the twin spacing. We vary the twin spacing. This dark line, black line, shows the stress strain law. Okay? So for twin spacing for 3.75 nm. This line, we reduce the uh, print spacing 2.92. We have this red curve. We can strengthen, right? Experiment showing this range you can, should be softened. Experiment. Because we're below 50 nanometer, right? We can strengthen. And we further reduce to 1.67. We reduce we, we put this, this, this green line here. We can further strengthen. Then we increase this to one point, uh, decrease the print spacing to 1.25. We get this curve here. Further decrease the twin spacing to this pink line, 0.83. All of them we get softened. Okay, we get softened. 
and now it's 0.63 and it's all in there. So it's low curve. And 20 nanometer the same thing. Now, I should mention this shoulder here is very well known because in the MPC there there's no defects. This star is just looking a free crystal. So this this top stress here should be understood as new creation of dislocations. So normally when we calculate flow stress, we ignore this, we ignore this bar. We try to average it over here. Okay. So if I can summarize that, we observe the phenomenon, qualitatively similar phenomena as experiments, but totally different roundness. Okay, totally different, totally roundness. Here, exper experimentally, they, they observe the critical free space in 50 nanometer. Okay, so you up here, you know, you get softened. But we have the strengthening up to reverse our critical free space is very small, it's much smaller than experiments. Our green size is also much smaller than experiments, okay? And here we also see that the critical free space depends on green depend on green side, right? For 10 nanometer brain, the critical free space in here. Right? For 20 nanometer, the, twin, the critical twin is going here. Right? So that's very interesting. That's pretty encouraging. But what if you increase, increase the green side to 500 nanometer? Right? So this means the critical twin space should be pushed toward this direction. At least we see some hope right, in compared with experiments. Okay? So this is a. Uh, so uh, what happens here? Right? Because we have a simulation experimentally. Uh, experimentally cannot know what's happening, right? Because these things happen so fast, so small. And this all can turn. So this electron uh, okay. okay. We cannot put in this one in the TEM and see what happens. And this too thick discussion. It's impossible. So simulation is, is, is very important. So what happens here? Okay, so we oh sorry. Yeah, let me show this first. Okay, what happens here? Okay. Now Watch this, uh, this is a surface, okay. So watch, here's the tweet boundary. You see these locations going across the uh, incline of the tweet boundary. Right? These tweet boundaries, you see these locations go at the angle of the tweet boundary, right? A tie up against the boundary. This is very much the classical picture of hall patch. Right? The cool classical hall patch picture is this location go against the, go against the barrier, and tie up the penetrate the barrier. So this picture is very similar to the classical hot patch picture, where defects go pile up against the wall. And uh, if you look, watch, this is a, a top one green. We, we take one green out. We also see this is a kind of a forest dislocations, just like GI Taylor has envisioned. This location coming from all directions and from the forest. So this, this, in this regime, we're in a classical hot patch regime, where dislocation pile up against, green, against twin boundaries, so as the three boundary spacing decreases, the strength goes up. But what happens in, in here? What happens when we cross this peak? Right? The inverse, uh, the, the inverse hot patch. Okay. Now, uh, now you see uh, here's my three boundaries. Here, three boundary here, like this, like three boundary. Uh, you see the dislocation now becomes whole parallel to three boundary. You don't see the dislocation going inclined to three boundary. We have this located more to the parallel to the, to the, to the, uh, to the subscale twins. And if I, if I watch closely, if I watch closely, you see all these location loops are going parallel to the mark. We don't see any dislocation going in any other directions. Okay? This is you know, highly organized, highly organized dislocation network parallel to the boundaries in that case. Okay, here's a, a schematic picture. Schematic picture in this side, we see all these loops, all these loops are, are in the same orientation, same slip system. And by here, we have a random forest picture, or forest, forest picture. And uh, uh, if you come to there, you can add the HCP symmetry. This tells you, this tells you whether it's located in parallel twin boundary. If it's located in all parallel twin boundary, then the atoms of HCP symmetry should remain the same in number, not in increase. But if this location all the parallel inclined between one, then you create many stacking faults. All the stacking faults inclined. So the number of HCP atoms should should increase, right? So we see that. Uh, for the thick, for relatively thick twins, 
So we see the number of HCP atoms increase dramatically with the strain. But as the clean spacing gradually decreased, gradually reduced, the HCP atoms remain constant, or actually slightly decreased. And this is because of detwinning in the system. Okay, so this is the, what happens in the softening regime. In the softening regime, uh, like this is like avatar. <laughs> Like a, like a piece of art inspired by the movie. <laughs> okay. We have, here, here's, here's a tree boundary. Okay, look at the tree boundary, Florida tree boundary. We remove some tree boundaries of the boundary just for our for visualization. You see loops are nuclear here, that loops, it's okay, loops are nuclear here, they're, they're nuclear here, and they're propagating one of the right? Propagating. So all these things. So here also shows the nucleation of tree boundary. So, so we observe dislocation in this softening regime, which is totally new that we don't understand. These dislocations are nuclear at the intersection between three boundaries and green boundaries. Okay. And nuclear, only one type of dislocation nuclear. These two splitting are dislocating parallel. This, they're called shock partials. Okay. Shock partial or, uh, or twin, twin partial, twinning partials. All, all other dislocations have, have disappeared. Because the, because the twin boundary is so densely, uh, densely packed, they have hindered any other dislocation from existing, except as one type of dislocation remains. Okay, twinning partials or only partials remain in the system. Okay. Now we develop a kinetic theory of twinning partial nucleation, which counting the how many sites of nucleation, okay, the green boundary, the uh, progress vector, uh, green side, the progress vector, this is the nuclear sites. Then, how many, what's the density per twin? Well, per twin, then you divide this by the twin thickness. Okay, and then you compute the strain rate. The strain rate will be the nucleation size <coughs> times the uh, probability of activation of the source. Okay, the probability of activation of the source depends on the activation energy times the stress. Okay? The stress will facilitate the activity. The nuclear dislocations. Uh, we get this is the very standard nucleation theory. And then we invert this, this equation, we get a flow stress of two parts. One part is temperature independent parts, only depends on activation energy. Okay, minus the temperature dependent term. Okay, and here's D over lambda. Look at the, here is strain rate. Okay, so the whole thing is rate dependent. So in our theory, so here we're saying that the D over lambda look at this ratio happening. This ratio. Now, as the twin spaces decrease, okay, so this number increases, so logarithmic increases, here's minus, so this slow stress decreases. Okay. So why is that? I think this mathematics right, tells you as the twin spacing decreases, the flow stress decreases. Why is that? It's because these are sources, okay? The dislocation source of the intersection between the boundary and green boundary. As you chop up the grain finer and finer, you create more sources. It's simply the sheer increase in, in dislocation sources, okay? Allow you to create more and more twinning partial in the system. These twinning partials soften the material, okay? So that's, that's our interpretation, our simulation shows that. The simulation shows that. So we compare with, of course, this with experiments. Okay. So here's, here's this equation. Okay. That's the whole patch. This is the experimental data. Experimental data is uh, two-level hierarchical materials. And the possible whole patch equation, here's our new theory, the, the, uh, the kinetic nucleation model, which captures this transition to right. But we have one fitting parameter here. Okay, the fitting parameter is activation energy. Because this activation energy is fitting right? And we can also vary this one to fit our AB simulations. Okay. So by, by changing this thing, changing this, using this one parameter as fitting parameter, we can fit experiments and also fit in our AB simulation. Yeah, in fact, too, right? The star is that one. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Did these two together? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, these two together. I mean, it's the second factor. Yes. So you have to come to it. Yeah, 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 that's the 
yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> good point, good point. Yeah, good point. Okay, so we, we, then we compare with all the data in the literature, like all the experiment simulation data in the literature. We find lots of experiment found in this regime, okay, in this regime. So people have studied uh, you know, nano crystal material, nano twin material. Most of the experiments are in this regime. So in this regime, because the technology has the only very recent become available, you could control the subscale twin down to nano scale. Uh, now, so we can reduce this twin speed now. So I should mention further. I should mention further. Okay. So why is the simulation experiment the, the critical twin size 15 nanometer, while simulation is much smaller? Because this only becomes ratio p over lambda, and the ratio between green size and twin size. Right? In experiments, the green size is much higher. Right? So in other words, the same ratio of lambda is corresponding much higher. In a simulation, so that's why we're going to work very lucky in this problem. Right? If you want to simulate some phenomenon in laboratory, you better have a behavior like this. Because in a simulation, you can very rarely capture the real experimental size. If there's a scaling law, if your physical phenomenon have a ratio between P over lambda, so you can simulate with a smaller grain, a smaller grain. <laughs> that's, that's why we say this phenomenon is pretty lucky. We think this, uh, this ratio. Okay? This ratio. Now, if you have all the other experiments together, you find most of these from data in literature, also in this region, and this is only available. This is from our collaborators. So they are only these data are very recently available, which is why people have missed this, this mechanism of phenomenon. Okay? Because this, is, this phenomenon is not so easy to catch. It requires very large P over lambda ratio, which is not easy to achieve with this set of point view. Also, simulation. In any simulation so far, most people are doing cross-site 3D. So what turns out to be wrong? Yeah? If you do a cross-site 3D, cross-site 3D means it's very, very big. Clever. It's not simply a three dimensional material. They take a slice of the material, They're like a plate like material, apply periodic boundary condition in the thickness direction. Okay. If you take a quasi 3D, here's I have this quasi 3D picture here. Now, this transition is not so obvious, right? Not so obvious. In a 3D, it's not very obvious to have this unsolvable phenomenon. But in a quasi 3D, it becomes less obvious than this one. And, uh, and also, furthermore, people have not put in enough data in process, even in process 3D direction. So here we show a number of data like this in literature. That's why the simulation people also miss this. Because uh, very few people are really doing uh, true three-dimensional uh, simulation. It's very expensive. Okay. Now I'll put some discussions before I conclude my talk. Uh, what are the solving mechanisms? Okay. It's not diffusion, it's not diffusion, because we exclude that, we compare with nano crystal and nano twin material. If the high mobile one does not cool, we don't believe that the coherent twin one will cool. So our interpretation is the following. As twin spacing decreases, the density of dislocation sources for this twin partials increase, this introduces a new softening method. It's completely source dominant. So why is there a transition from whole patch to softening? A large twin space, and there are insufficient nuclear source of twin partials. Okay? Because this twin partial are very sensitive to how many sources are available. Large twin space is not enough source. So the whole patch might be dominant. Whole patch, right? Although the twin, or twin space, in, as you continue to chop up the grains, refine the grains, you're putting lots more and more source in the system, you eventually activate this uh, twin partial mechanism. So our pre-existing dislocation is necessary for softening. So because experimentalists don't have anything to, to uh, they don't have any theory to explain the phenomena. So they are, in their paper, they were attributing this uh, potential uh, reason for solving to pre-existing dislocations. Okay? But in our simulation, we have no result of the free crystal. Okay? We have the same phenomenon. That means uh, the, the pre-existing pre dislocation are not necessary. In December, can we describe this theoretically? <coughs> yes, we believe. Can we describe this by the PFAT new vision theory? Okay. So, so discussion number two. The, the classical textbook information about Springsteen theory materials uh, science give no concern for nucleation. 
If you read the material science textbook, you talk about strengths and it's always in creation, you're always in interaction between two dislocations, between dislocating and green boundary. How come we never talk about new creation? Okay. That's, that's the question, right? It's like your cracks. Right, right, right. Yeah, Nobody like talks about existing. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I asked my colleague Bill Nix from Stanford University. So Bill Nix has an uh, answer. He says, if the material is coarse green, right, dislocation can propagate as a, just a mean free pass, but just can propagate. Then it will cross the, it will multiply by itself. Okay. So source are not necessary for coarse green. In a sense, dislocation can multiply. One dislocation can multiply, and two, two can multiply, like a chain reaction. But that requires a mean free pass, an mean free pass of at least one to two microns. It certainly has to be removed. But in the nano crystal material, the mean free pass for dissipation is, is, is small. Right? So you cannot, cannot multiply. But dissipation is, it hits the boundary or hits the surface before multiply. The source is about absolutely critical, if you think about it, for nano crystal material. That's because we don't really think about it. We've been ignoring the nucleation for too long because we've been considering coarse grain material. If you talk about nanocrystal material, you have to consider source. Okay? So here, basically, the story is very simple. This is what nucleation is for solving mechanism without need for diffusion. Right? Once the nucleation is considered, this story is pretty really simple. Okay? The puzzle is because we don't really think about nucleation. Now, this is discussion number three. Henry was the organist this one. So this is a T.I. Taylor's picture. Okay. T.I. Taylor is a great scientist. They think that more common material is the chief sort of the, sort of forest dislocation. It's a many, many dislocations, just like forest. If you want to deform the crystal, you have to pass additional dislocation through the forest. Right? The, the stress needs to be large enough to allow additional dislocation to cut across this existing forest. Right? But look at the, the hierarchical material, this nanotech material. There's no dislocating forest, right? Dislocating are highly organized structure. They do not get entangled just like in T.I. Taylor as in vision. In fact, they go, they go just like trains on the railway. They show highly ordered fashion, right? But here is a source star. We, we, don't, we just don't have enough source for the magnet to, to be activated and the magnet is You need sufficiently thin twins, uh, five twin structure to be able to activate. Okay. The, the next uh, point is the shifting role of microstructure. Okay. In, in, a, in a traditional material science, green boundary is the uh, strengthening. Uh, is the, is the green boundary uh, provides, right? uh, in a traditional material science, the green boundary is string the whole patch. Green boundary is a strengthening. When we introduce green boundary into the system, we increase the strengthening material. But in the high in two level structure, the road, green boundary, twin boundary, etc. Okay? The twin boundary is the hard one. Okay? As you would the twin boundary, the strings increase. The twin boundary is the hard one. The green boundary is the softening. The green boundary provides sources. It's, this, it's actually the green boundary is responsible for the softening mechanism of the circuit. So these two are totally opposite. To, so, so this softening is induced by the existing green boundary. Well, twin boundary is obstacle to the dislocation motion. Now, another, another discussion is that what we talk about, I talk about here, is not only source control mechanism. Okay? Another very well known source control deformation mechanism is in a pillar, is in a nano pillar or micro pillar. This is a huge number of people also studying the deformation of micro pillars. Okay? So, a pillar is something you use to ID of this column. Okay? And you observe this guy, actually this guy has, shows very interesting behavior, right? It shows as you as you decrease the, the, the pillar size, very strong size effect. It's really strong size effect. In fact, when you compress a pillar, compress a pillar, okay, normally the material you can you deform it, you increase this density. You have lots of dislocations in the structure. In a pillar case, you start with some dislocation, you compress it, become dislocated free. They call mechanical anemia of the material. So Peter has very peculiar behavior compared with all the material. And now the study has shown there's also source control. It's, 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 it's the sorting source. The important role here that this will a lot of interesting behavior. Now we can compare the Peter and the twin material. And we can conclude the following. 
a now appears density dislocation source, the pre existing dislocation of types of source and types of dislocation needed, all you want to more random. Okay. Compared to now print methods. Print boundaries, in this case, play two roles, dual roles, right? First, they induce stress concentration, green boundary, hence defining the source density. So print boundary actually give us tell us what the source source are. In the field, we don't have that. It's all random. Right? It's a quick idea by the other means. And second of all, the print boundary provides an easy pass of guides and tracks. The print boundary acts as a regular track to guide dislocation motion, which is why in this case we can develop a theory. In this case, so far, other people working on some other similar theory to explain, to describe the, the spinsing print. And here we have softening, here we have spinsing. So, but both cases are source control. The last, my last point is, the question is, can we focus on one mechanism at a time? Okay. Now we see we have this uh, we have this parallel between boundaries. We have these locations that we incline or patch mechanism. Could we, could we design the material? Okay, this is an excellent engineering application. Can we design the material? We can only act with one mechanism at a time. Okay. The whole patch mechanism, the, the printing partials, and so forth. Okay. So, so we did some uh, uh, further experiments and theory. Okay. So in this case, we, uh, we, we studied the so-called uh, columnar green material. So columnar green means, means all the green bound in the same directions. Okay. Now, now we, can, uh, uh, we can apply different loading. We apply loading compressed layers or parallel layers or in a 45, de 45 degree direction is the shear. Right? We can apply the loading that's a 45 degree direction which are the three boundaries. Okay. Now, uh, we observed a very interesting mechanism here. So when, when, you, when, you, uh, comp when we compress, okay, when we compress, uh, uh, so this is the actually experimental, uh, so this is the actual experimental data for such a system. When you compress the material in the parallel three boundaries, uh, we see in this case, one of them is tension, one of them is compression, the other one is compression. There are two compression per one tension. So they all overlap with each other. Okay. What happened in the, in the simulation? In the simulation, when we do this, we see the mechanism of all by so called threading dislocations. Okay. As you dislocation all of threading dislocations goes like this. This mechanism actually is quite surprising. We didn't expect when we do this because threading dislocation. Actually, I want to show you, I want to go back to my uh, Couple pages ago. Let's see. You see, it's very interesting. Okay, I've never been talked about in the green material. It's only in the film case we talk about threading dislocations. So where does this this, this one come from. Okay. So here, I showed this movie, I showed this, this simulation before. Okay. Now, if you watch again, if you watch again, uh, you see there's a thread in this location here. You see, after that. You see, if you watch carefully, you see this dislocation here. You see, here, there's this one line here and here, come back. These are actually threatening situations. Okay. Threatening situations means we have two tails, we have a channel, right? So two twin planes. The dislocation, you have two tails, a lot of twins. Okay. But there's a thread in dislocation, probably. This is a very well known mechanism in films. Okay. And uh, here, in, in the multi layer material, here, we don't have a thin film, but but this is now a twin material. Very interesting, it's the same thing. Oops. Oh, here. Okay. When you, when you, when you uh, compress a, a point in this direction, you see all this will really not become thread in this location, right? Just in this case. Okay. Now, when you, uh, when we, 
compress in the vertical direction, not in the weak direction. Okay? We, we don't have any frequency. In this case, you get sort of tangling. This is the class of all types of separation. Now we see the nuclei here and go in time between boundaries and become a huge forest separation. This is a, a pretty classical. Okay? When you do a 45 degree direction, you compress. Now we see twinning partials. Okay? This way, all of a sudden, change the twinning partials. They go all parallel. The, the printing planes. Now, we can compare our simulation with experiments. Okay. So this is experiments here. Okay. When I compress in 90 degree directions for the polymer green material, here's a stress strain curve. Okay. So in this case, our simulation shows all the whole possible whole patch dislocations, right? Because in this case, except there's no work hardening here. It's pretty interesting. When you go from zero degree direction, you compress to zero degree, the strength is lower, right? The strength is lower. So now, uh, you intentional compression, also no work problem. But if you compress in the 45 degree direction here, now we see there's a significant, this 45 degree direction, the strength is lower, but we get some work problem like this. Now, we can compare our simulation with experiments. The ratio between the strengths 90 degree direction, 0 degree direction, experiment with 1.92, so this ratio, our simulation is 1.32. And uh, if you do 90 degree and 45 degree direction, uh, and at this point, it's 2.58, simulation 2.65. So the simulation experiment work agrees pretty well. Okay. And we also observe, we have now go to TEM to refine the threat dislocation as we, as we find from the experiments. Okay. Okay, now, uh, okay, let me just conclude my talk. I think I, I have a... Uh, uh, so I want to say hierarchical materials. Okay, this is a inspired by nature. This is a bio-inspired. Allows strength and activity to be controlled by microstructure of different size scales. Okay, that's the key. Because you have ductility and strength. If you only have one microstructure, you can only improve one. You sacrifice the other. But if you have a two-level structure, then you can increase in both at the same time. And you can increase in ductility and strength at the same time. That requires have um, more than one level structure for that. More than one level structure control, as we show here, right? Uh, you can shift high strength at the same time. In Taylor Hall and other materials, strength in theory, the strength really attributes to the create interaction. In contrast, the maximum strength now is proper, it's governed by this equation creation as in Taylor's. And a new, a new theory of the string equation governed Encounter most experimental electrodynamic like simulations, and we have identified three basic information mechanisms in such hierarchical materials. Fall patch tangling dislocation, just like Taylor envisioned the forest, the threading dislocation. So far, we only have in thin film, people in thin film those things, in the silicon germanium system, but it's also active here, and the parallel by the twin pressures. And it's possible to activate. The design material actually one at a time. Okay. Each one has different has different features, as this experiment showed here. Right? The twinning partials is very very good work hardening capability. If you want to have a good stable material, you, you could controllably introduce this mechanism. The other two mechanisms with higher strengths are very little work hardening. What do you see upon unloading? Upon unloading. Ah, upon unloading, yes. Um, so any damage? No, no, I mean, the curve. So damage begins. Yes. <laughs> That's the curve. Um, yes, the curve. Yes. Yes, we have a look at the unloading. Uh, uh, they don't even, they, they, this puts on nuts That's on average, right? right? No. Normally, in that person, you would have some elastic, then bend down. Yeah, that is good. Uh, uh, bend down. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the uh, yeah. species yeah. is only the elastic. That there is a correlation between this and later fracture. Uh, this material has a high ductility. High ductility. Uh, the fracture has not been investigated so far, but only quality sense. They have they show a strong resistant fracture, but has not been carefully investigated. <coughs> but but this ductility can go up to you know more than ultra fine grain, and actually more than coarse grain material. <laughs> What's wrong with coarse grain material? You have necking. Right? You have a coarse grain copper, they fail by necking. But this material is very high work hardening. It's very stable. Right? 